My name is Jack Nelson. I'm with Master Window Cleaners of America. I'm the executive director. We're here today for a seminar with Dan Fields on uh, construction cleanup, and I'd like to introduce Dan now. Thank you, Jack. I appreciate it. I appreciate everything the association's doing to get this seminar going. Uh, Fields Construction Services, which is my company, is going uh, with uh, Master Window Cleaners of America, and uh, we're going to try to give a just a basic seminar on construction window cleaning. This will just be the basics. Uh, anyone watching this video uh, should understand that this is just a starting point. They need to uh, test the different procedures that we're going to show here, uh, test different chemicals, soaps, acids, whatever they decide to use, and uh, judge for themselves exactly uh, whether it's going to work or not. Like I say, this will just be the basics. First of all, I'd like to go over the, uh, what a construction window cleaner can expect when he gets into the field of construction window cleaning. Uh, Martin will have some photos here of some of the jobs that we have done in uh, construction window cleaning here in the San Francisco Bay Area. These here are houses that are uh, residential houses in the construction industry in the Bay Area. This is one of the bigger builders. This is just a far away shot of what a construction window cleaner can expect in the residential industry. As you can see, the, the texture and paint is pretty heavy on the windows. The, the following photos will show you more close-ups on that. This is the exterior of a townhouse where you can see the windows weren't covered up very well during the plastering and stuccoing process and they let the stuff run down the windows. These windows here weren't covered very well when the house was spray painted. They did a good job around the edges, but I think somebody forgot the center. This is the inside of the house where they tape and paper around the edges and textured the centers. So usually in a lot of residential, they don't do a real good job on uh, covering the glass. And these are just more pictures of the same. I think there's a window there. Some construction jobs are a little bit cleaner than others. These are probably, I would say, the worst of the worst. Uh, if you get into some of the builders do cover their windows a lot better than this. Uh, I would say these windows here is what you can expect on the worst end. Uh, some of them are a little better, some of them are a lot better. They do seem to be getting better than they used to be though. Construction window cleaning in uh, commercial areas like warehouses or commercial buildings, usually that construction window cleaning is usually a uh, lot cleaner windows. It just involves taking stickers off the glass because the glass is usually put in last. So they don't usually put the glass in and build the building around the glass. Where in houses, they, put the, they frame the house and then they go ahead and put the windows in and then they do the texturing, painting, plastering after the windows are in. So they do need to be covered and unfortunately as you can see a lot of the times they're not. This is what we're going to cover in this seminar how to safely get this construction debris off the glass without scratching. A lot of times I'll hear a plaster tell us that yeah we did cover them windows. Well I don't know how the plaster got on in there if they covered them. A lot of times what will happen is the plaster will cover the windows up and uh, they'll use visqueen and tape and then halfway through the construction process the, the sheetrock contractor will be sheetrocking inside the house and it'll be so warm in the house he'll open the windows up and take a knife and, and cut the plastic off. That way there he can let air into the building and no one puts the plastic back before the plastering is started again. I think this window here it's obvious I don't think there was any plastic on that to begin with. But that's kind of what uh, the worst of the worst a construction window cleaner can expect. And I think that's one reason why most window cleaners don't want to go into that arena. Now what I'd like to do is, is uh, cover some of the tools and equipment that uh, construction window cleaners use. This is by no, far, by no way a complete list of uh, what they do use. Uh, if any of you do, you do do construction window cleaning, I'm sure there are some things here that uh, you use and there's other things that aren't here that you, you also use. I'd like to go through them real quick, show you what they all are. 
and uh, show you what I use some of them for. I don't use very many of these things, but I know a lot of window cleaners do. I'll start out with the soaps. Uh, in my company, we use a, a phosphoric soap on the exterior windows only, and we use this soap to help take off all the plaster and the stucco and any concrete. What this soap does, it actually dissolves the cement that, that's in concrete, and the cement is what holds the concrete onto the glass. So if you dissolve the cement, the concrete will let go of the glass and it comes off a lot easier. So that's what we use this for, and we'll show that later in the video. Uh, this soap here is uh, a soap that we buy. It's just a window cleaning soap. Uh, we put it in our water, whether we do insides or outsides. It helps, helps us uh, scrape and helps us squeegee. Uh, there's absolutely no effect as far as taking off plaster or dissolving paint. There's no uh, solvent in it or no alcohol or anything in it. The third thing I do keep in the truck, even though we don't use a lot of it, is uh, we do keep lacquer thinner in the truck. And the reason we keep this in the truck for window cleaning is every so often when you're doing windows for any length of time at all, you will get water spots and paint and stuff like that on the edge of your squeegee that needs to be cleaned off every once in a while. And what we'll do is, is run lacquer thinner down the squeegee and take a rag and clean it off so you have a nice clean squeegee so you don't have paint drops on here that will leave streaks on your windows. So like I said, we don't use a whole lot of this, but we like to have it on the truck just in case. We can take care of just what you saw in that video just with these chemicals alone. Beyond that, since this is a basic uh, construction window cleaning seminar, uh, we will be covering some of the basics that I'm sure most of you people already know as far as how to squeegee and different things like that. Some of the things I will do is different than the way you do it. We do single stroke squeegeeing where you wipe the squeegee, single stroke, wipe the squeegee. We have reasons for doing that. One is the windows are so small. Usually on commercial windows, you can fan a lot more. It's a lot faster. And if we had all big windows, we'd fan also. But if they're such small windows, it's not that much faster to fan them. The second reason we do the one stroke is because there's so much sand and grit on the glass. Even after you clean it, there's a lot of grit. When you try to fan it, if you pick up just one grid of sand, you'll start leaving a squeegee mark all over the window. So we have found out it's just quicker for us uh, to use the straight stroke. Uh, it's a personal thing. It, we, we do know some window cleaners that use the other one. So it's entirely up to you on that. Uh, we have a holster with, uh, or we have a belt with three holsters on it. In this holster, we, we carry uh, a scraper in one of them, and we carry two size squeegees. The sizes we use for residential is an 8 inch and a 14 inch. And we come up with them sizes just with the size of windows we run up against. Uh, I don't have a, a one foot window side light here, but we do have a lot of one window side light that these come in handy for. Beyond that, uh, we have what we call a screen clip. We clip this on our belt. And what this is for is when you go up and down a ladder, extension ladder, if there's a screen on a window, you can pop the screen out, put it on your clip, so you don't not have to hold it with one hand, just put it on your clip behind you, do your window, unclip it, and put it back on the, on the screen. We also use this for uh, this little knife that we use to clean window frames with. And my guys will clip that on the, on the clip so they have it all the time. When I first started doing windows, I used to throw this in my water bucket but the drawback of doing that is it does fill full of water during the day. And then when you go to get it, you start cleaning the window frame and the water runs down your arm, down your shirt, and into your pants. And by the end of the day, you look like you wet your pants. So it does get to be very annoying, especially if you're using phosphoric acid. I don't really like acid down my pants. So uh, we uh, have changed that. And, and now we actually clip it on a, on a clip instead. So this is what this is a clip. And I will talk more about the little knife later. As far as scraping the windows, uh, in the old days, uh, we used to call it just paint scraping. We didn't call it construction cleaning. That's kind of the old term for it. But if you're going to do paint scraping, you need something to scrape with. And there's dozens and dozens of different types of uh, scrapers. And I want to uh, reiterate right now that, that I am not uh, authorizing or suggesting any one scraper any type of acids, any type of squeegees, strip washers, window brushes, this is for you to decide. I have a lot of different examples here. Uh, and down, Further in the video, I'll show you the ones that we use. 
But there's many different types of scrapers, and I don't even know who manufactures most of these, but I know a lot of guys use the different razor scrapers. You go to any hardware store or any one supply store, you'll see that there, there, there's quite a variety. And despite what Gannis says, yes, they are for scraping glass. Okay. What we use for construction window cleaning in my company, it's, our, it's my preference, we use uh, putty knives, which is commonly known as a broad knife. And uh, w the way we use the, this putty knife is we actually flatten the putty knife out. So when we, we actually sharpen the, the knife, I put it on a towel so that the file doesn't chatter. I put the knife in the middle of the file and drag it across the file. Turn it around, drag it across the file, which flattens this edge out. Then I knock the burrs off, which makes a nice square scraper. And this is what we use to do all construction window cleaning with. If you have to take off stickers or little pieces of tape, we do use small razor blades. But this is our scraper of choice. This scraper runs about uh, $8. We buy one about every two years. Every morning we scrape the, we uh, sharpen these before we start. That's imperative because during the night, if any rust forms on this, which is iron oxide, that will scratch the glass. So if you do sharpen this the day before, you're ready to go home, you want to get ready for the next day, you sharpen this, you put it in your bucket, the moisture from your sponges or your window brush or any moisture at all will form on this edge and form iron oxide. You might not even see it. You take this out the next day and start cleaning glass, you will scratch the glass. But it's not the scraper. My theme here is scrapers do not scratch glass. Something else does. In this case, it would be the rust. Later, I'll talk about fabricating debris on tempered glass. We'll touch base on that just a little bit, but we have another seminar on that. But make sure you sharpen this, fellas, first thing in the morning every day if you decide to go this way. That's imperative. On the stickers and tape, as I said, we use the, the small razor blades. I've, I've seen several different types of little razor blade holders. Uh, here's one style. Here's another style. Here's yet another style where you put, it's a wristband. Now this is pretty popular with my guys. Uh, one thing I do not suggest, even though you'll see a lot of old timers do it, razor blades don't belong in your mouth. When you're doing windows, there's a lot of guys that'll do that, probably including me. Hopefully I won't do that during filming. <laughs> another thing they'll do is put it behind the ear. That's pretty popular with the old guys. I used to do that one pretty often until it fell down my shirt on the way home from work one day because I forgot it was up there. So that, that cured me of that one. But fellas, uh, if you're gonna use the little razor blades, uh, I suggest get some wristbands or, or something else to put them in. Uh, plastic scrapers or broad knives, the only reason I have them sitting out here is because it was suggested a few years back by the glass industry, this is what we should be using to clean windows with because it doesn't scratch glass. Well, it also doesn't clean windows. It doesn't take the stuff off the glass. And uh, like I say, we'll cover this more uh, in the next seminar. <coughs> this little uh, brush and uh, screwdriver, we use this to clean out the tracks before we get started. Uh, these tracks are pretty clean, and we're not really going to cover too much on tracks on this seminar. But uh, we rough out the tracks, knock all the big stuff out, and, and sweep it out with this. Usually my guys will uh, vacuum out the tracks before we get started. These are just brass clips that go in the, in, in the squeegees. Oh, by the way, these, these scrapers here are just old scrapers. These are about two years old. They originally started out the same as this one. So you can see how many times the guy must have filed that to get it down that short. Now I have some window cleaners that like to get them all the way down to here. I, I think they're just being cute. <laughs> but uh, the wider it is, the better, I think. But the biggest thing I like about using a putty knife or a broad knife, I usually call it, over a razor scraper, not that I'm uh, authorizing either one, is because not just the price, 
which is huge difference, but it's a safety. I don't know of anyone who uses a razor scraper on a regular basis that doesn't have horror stories to tell me. I'm not talking little nicks, I'm talking major, major cuts. So when I mention razor scrapers of, of whatever type, I forgot to mention the band-aids. Usually, window cleaners that use the razor scrapers will spend more money on band-aids than I spend on scrapers. And that's unfortunate. Like I say, I'm not saying don't use the razor scrapers. Uh, they do work good. But they're more of a more modern way of going. Back when I started 41 years ago, they didn't have, they didn't have razor scrapers. Jack, they had cars, and they had, they had trucks, and they had things like that. I wasn't from the wagon days, but... <laughs> But anyway, they didn't have them back then. Uh, moving down the line here, uh, we use uh, sponges a lot uh, for our window cleaning. Uh, I know most window cleaners uh, nowadays don't use quite as many sponges as, as they used to. Uh, most window cleaners nowadays use uh, uh, surgical towels. They usually touch up around the windows with surgical towels. Uh, I'll show you how we squeegee windows where we don't have to touch up our windows. So we don't need surgical towels at all. These nylon pads we use for uh, cleaning the window frames and cleaning the tracks. Make sure if you decide to use a green nylon pad, you keep it off the glass. There's pumice stone in these, these pads and other abrasives, and it will scratch the glass. So do not use this on the glass. And for that reason, I think a lot of, a lot of window cleaners have chosen to go to the white pad. White pad does a pretty good job on frames also. They're not quite as coarse as the green, but it does a, a pretty nice job. So uh, a lot of them have gone that way on that. Knee pads, we all know what that's for. Uh, anytime you're working on the house, you have a lot of, a lot of uh, windows you're going to have to get on your knees. Uh, I highly suggest you use knee pads. Uh, I didn't take my dad's suggestion when he told me to use them, but that's why I can't get on my knees now. Use the knee pads, fellas, if you're going to be on your knees very long. Uh, the only thing I have left is uh, how are we going to wet the window? Uh, most window cleaners nowadays use uh, strip washers, is, is what I think they're called. I don't know if there's any other name that guys are using. Uh, strip washers are, are pretty good. Uh, they do have their limitations. One of the limitations is uh, the amount of water they can hold. When you're cleaning the inside of uh, construction window cleaning, you're talking a lot of times a lot of texture. It takes a lot of water to soften up that texture, so you want to get a lot of water on that glass to soften it up. A strip washer sometimes doesn't hold enough water. Also on the outside of glass, if you use a strip washer, if you use this to wet your glass, any sand that gets in that strip washer, you could scratch the glass with it. So I'm not a, a real big fan of strip washers, but I, I do know they work, but uh, they do have their drawbacks. What we do use is a window brush. Uh, my company uses the, the pure uh, bore bristle. They're a lot more expensive than the, than the strip washer. Uh, hopefully that's not the reason why people use strip washers. Uh, these run about 50 bucks. Uh, I don't know how much strip washers are. They're around 10 somewhere. Is, is that pretty close? So they are a lot more expensive. Uh, window brushes do wear out fairly quick. This is an old window brush. You, you can see the bristle difference. So uh, when they get down like this, you definitely need to get another one. But brand new, a, a window brush like this will hold almost a quart of water without dropping a drop. And I'll show that in, in the seminar. It's all on how you hold the, the window brush. I think that just about covers everything here. Does anybody have any questions about the, the tools so far? Dan, any adverse effects of the uh, lacquer thinner to either um, the rubber or I use stainless, but to uh, a brass? You mean on, on uh, cleaning the rubber? Uh, no, there's not any adverse effect on it at all. Uh, the, the rubber, it, it, it may have an effect on that if you use lacquer on it all the time. Probably no doubt it would dry it out. But, but uh, the squeegee rubbers are replaced so often, I don't think it's going to have any effect on it. Uh, my guys usually replace their rubbers uh, about once a week. And, and I know a lot of window cleaners that replace them every day. And they use one side before lunch. During lunch, they flip it over, use the other side, and then, then toss them. 
but uh, a, a lot of using a squeegee is the pressure you put on the actual channel itself. Uh, that's something I, I won't be able to show, but when, when I squeegee a window, you want to squeegee to where the, the rubber is just barely touching the glass. That's the key to not just longevity on your squeegee rubber, but that's also the key on a very cold, misty day to get all the water off. The harder you push, the more water goes through, and you would think it would be just the opposite. So a lot of times when guys replace rubbers, it, 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 it's because they do it like they change their socks. They just think it's time to do it. I tell my guys, change the rubbers when it's no longer square along the edge, and you can always flip it over and use the other side. But if there's a nick in it, yeah, it needs to be replaced. But the actual lacquer thinner, I don't think the lacquer thinner will really damage the rubber significantly enough to uh, hurt the rubber itself, because you're going to re be replacing it uh, so quickly anyway. Usually, my guys clean the rubber every couple of days, and that's when we have a lot of paint, where we find little specks and the specs get on the, the actual corner of the rubber that actually does the squeegeeing. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. I, I do have um, one other question. A um, lot of uh, wood construction, um, as opposed to textured or stucco in my area as well, how does your methodology differ um, with some of these products on construction cleanup? Uh, you mean as far as cleaning the glass or as far as uh, any rundown? Uh, Combination cleaning the glass, uh, attention to frames, etc. Okay. Uh, usually, when you have wooden frames, uh, the production houses that, that we do, we do about 4,500 houses a year. Uh, I would say 99% of them houses are production houses and are vinyl frames, like, like you see here. But we do maybe 50 custom houses that do have the wooden frames inside and out. And usually, them frames are completely finished when we get there. And usually, them windows are covered 100%. So there's not a whole lot of cleaning texture and plaster off of wooden frames. And usually the wooden frames are on the inside of the house stained, and the outside, the outside are usually aluminum. They're, they're probably a clad window. But the inside, there's not a whole lot to do with the frames but to wipe them down maybe with a sponge. As far as uh, one other thing I wanted to touch base on is, is I do not recommend using any solvent at all for any window cleaning, uh, which not just lacquer thinner but anything else that is a solvent. Because almost all windows nowadays are IG units, which is insulated glass units, a double pane. And if solvent gets down behind this frame, you always have the possibility of that IG unit seal failing and if the window will steam up between the glass. And if that should happen, uh, I've seen times where more times than not, uh, the window cleaner is called on board and they want to know what you used on your on your window cleaning, and if, and if you tell them it was a solvent, well, they'll be more than happy to hand you the bill for that, even though, even though it may not have anything to do with the solvent, because you can get away with a lot. But uh, I would recommend staying away from solvent uh, or chemicals on, on uh, or, or solvent, I mean, on, on doing, uh, trying to get paint off or anything like that. Paint and, and stains can be taken off with razor blades and burger window cleaning soap. Craig? Yeah, yeah, if you could, could you reiterate a little more on your smaller broad knife? Oh yeah, I'm sorry, I forgot that. Uh, I, I will be using this smaller uh, broad knife or little putty knife uh, on my inside window cleaning. Uh, but what we actually use this for is, 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 is to, when we clean the frames, if there's much debris on the frames, we will use this to knock it off. And this uh, little broad knife is flattened out or sharpened the same way the other one was. This putty knife starts out as a inch and a quarter flex regular putty knife. And what we do with it is cut it off at an angle, then put a 90 degree on it, then we flatten it out, knock the burrs off. This way here you can go along your vinyl frames and knock things off and, and it won't cut into your frame at all where if you attempt to use something that's sharper in these razor blades to take it off, you can do it, but you have to be very good on your angle. You know? And if you use these a lot, you can get real good at it. But you'll damage a lot of frames getting good at it. Where by using this knife here, it makes it a lot quicker. The other thing I like better about using this knife is on the inside, and we'll demonstrate that, is it fits real nice where this is on the frame, this fits nice along the wall and it gets in the corners very good. 
So you can just go real quick and it just cuts it right back real smooth. And we'll show that, I'll show it in action on the, on the inside of the, when we do the inside windows. Okay. I'm not going to have a whole lot of stuff on the frames, uh, but I will show you how this works. The biggest thing I'm, I'm concerned about this seminar is to get people started anyway. Uh, They're not going to have all the knowledge they need, but it'll get them started on getting the construction debris off the glass without scratching it. That's what construction window cleaning is all about. Anybody can get con construction debris off glass. That's easy. But get it off without scratching it. Okay? Mike? Yeah, I have a question about the soap you use on the exterior. Um, I understand that's something that you have made for your company. Is that something that, can we order that or do you, can you recommend another kind of a uh, product that we can use that will do the same thing? Uh, as I said earlier, uh, especially on the video, I, I do not want to recommend any products. Uh, I don't even want to recommend this product. Uh, what this product has is the phosphoric acid in it. There's, I, I know of a lot of construction window cleaners that use uh, toilet bowl cleaners or uh, shower stall cleaners. Uh, cleaners that, that uh, take care of water spots, hard water spots, will usually work the same on this. Uh, maybe during intermission I could tell you where I get this from, who manufactures it for me. But uh, this product here is, is actually uh, manufactured originally for uh, tile setters. And uh, tile setters uh, set tile, they grout the tile, and then you have that film on the tile after it sets. The next day they come back and they use this phosphoric acid to burn off that the cement film. So I, I thought I'd give that a try and, and uh, it works really good. Uh, 20, 30 years ago we used to use muriatic acid. And I do not recommend ever using muriatic acid on the glass, on the frames. Uh, we did it, we got away with it for a long time, but that was before we knew the health risks. And now uh, we, we've gone to this product and this product works very well. Keith? Uh, your sharp and broad knife, you say you sharpen it when you leave in the morning. Do you sharpen it all during the day? Uh, the, the broad knife, usually we sharpen it when it, when it uh, needs to be sharpened, and you can usually tell when it needs to be sharpened because it's just, when it gets dull, it, it doesn't take everything off all the way down to the surface of the glass. So, so if, if you have windows, say for example, like these windows here, you would probably uh, sharpen it again at 10 o'clock. And then when you stop at, at, at for lunch at noon, you'd sharpen it again maybe. But you'll be able to tell whether it's cutting smooth. It's kind of like using a razor blade. Uh, if you're cutting boxes with a razor blade or cleaning windows with a razor blade, you can tell when the razor blade's getting dull. And when it's getting dull and you're having to push harder or you have to go over it two or three times, you know it's getting dull. And you have to size up yourself. Is it quicker for me to do it two or three times or stop, take the five minutes, replace your blades or sharpen your broad knife so you can go back and, and hit it quick? Usually on plaster, it isn't as critical, believe it or not, to have it that sharp. You could probably just sharpen it at noon. But when you get a lot of stains or a lot of paints, a lot of glass is solid paint like that was in the, uh, the images we showed, you need a pretty sharp broad knife then. Or as you guys know that are in the business, you, you need a pretty sharp uh, razor knife too. Otherwise, you're not going to get all the paint off. You're going to leave little lines behind, and you've got to keep going back to get it. And when I do windows and my guys do windows, we like to get it on the first pass. We want to just go. Also, another thing I want to bring up uh, on, on the, the broad knife and on the razor scraper, uh, it, it's been said out there that, that uh, you're scratching the glass because there's a nick in the knife, or it's a dull knife is the reason you're scratching the glass. That is a myth. Uh, I, I didn't bring a brick with me today, or I, or I could demonstrate it, but it has been demonstrated at uh, glass conventions and uh, window cleaning conventions. Uh, maybe I'll try it the next one I do. I'll remember. But uh, you can actually take a brick and beat this knife on a brick or drag it across the stucco and really nick it up good, wipe it off with a clean rag, wet a window, scrape it, wet it, squeegee it down. It will not scratch glass. If it's rusty, it'll scratch glass. But just, just the nicks itself, it will not scratch glass. And uh, I invite any of you to try it when you get home. Make sure you wipe it off when you're done doing it, though, and uh, give it a try. Uh, Jerry. Hey, Dan. Um, I use a, a razor scraper, and I do get cuts and things like that during the day. With the broad knife, you can 
not just specially for the construction cleaning, but you can use it for like your regular, like your regular customers with the regular window cleaning solution to replace it. Yes, uh, we use the broad knife for everything, and we don't do uh, wash jobs for customers that are living in houses. All we do is brand new houses. So everything that we do is involves paint scraping. We scrape every square inch of every window we do. Uh, we probably do over 50,000 windows a month. And we scrape both sides of every window. So uh, I know residential, guys do residential only, wash jobs especially. Uh, sometimes the first time they do it, they'll paint scrape both sides of the glass or scrape both sides of the glass just to make sure they get everything off. And then maybe the second or third trip, you can just do a wash job. It's a lot quicker. And I know it takes you longer to do it the first time, but it's very impressive to have windows that look like they're not even there. So yeah, you can do that. There's only one precaution, and, and we'll definitely cover that in much, much more detail in, in the next seminar on tempered glass. But anyone using a scraper needs to be aware of tempered glass defects or poor quality tempered glass. There is tempered glass on the market now that will scratch when you clean it. And it, it involves in having fabricating debris from the tempering process on this glass surface and when you scrape off your construction debris, you're actually scraping off the defects also. And that will cause scratching. So make sure when you do get into construction window cleaning, you make sure you get a waiver signed that you are going to be using a scraper. And you will not be held liable for any scratches on any tempered glass due to fabricating debris. Because you have no control over it. You have no way of identifying that it's there. And I would highly suggest on your residential jobs, just doing wash jobs. If you, anytime you pull out the scraper, I highly recommend you guys get that waiver signed before you start. If you can't get them to sign it, you don't do the job. Because if you can't convince them before you did the job, you're not going to convince them after you scratch their windows. So it's very important to get that signed. I can't stress that enough. On construction window cleaning, if you leave here with only one thing, Never mind the tools I use, never mind the way I clean windows, never mind the soaps, acids, or anything else. If you only remember one thing, it's the waiver. Get that waiver signed. I guarantee you, it will put you out of business. I know several cleaning companies that have gone out of business over it. And I also do consultations on that. It can get a lot of money real quick. Most cases start at 20000 I've done them all the way up to $2 million. So take it seriously. On my website, stopscratchglass.com, there's a lot of information on this. There's, there is sample waivers on this. I suggest you take a look at them, download them if you would like. Uh, you feel free to use them. I also have waivers for the builders to give the window suppliers. So the builder can say he's not going to be responsible for poor quality tempered glass if it scratches. So he can send it back. So that, that waiver's on there too, and I suggest anyone who's doing construction window cleaning, download that and give that to your builder so you can help him out and see if we can straighten this thing out. But it's very important, uh, the tempered glass thing is, is something that's been hurting a lot of window cleaners. And we'll cover that on another seminar in detail. Jason. Hi, Dan. Um, I've had a few glass suppliers that I've talked to and consulted with and builders that have suggested only using a one or one and a half inch scraper rather than a six inch saying that that's the cause or to use white pads or polishing um, wool like a four aught steel wool um, and I've been told and, and, and teach them that it doesn't make a difference on the size of the blade whether it's a one inch or six inch it's just that a six inch on a defective tempered glass is probably going to dislodge more um, fabricating debris. Can you expand on that a little bit? Uh, I've, I've heard the same thing, uh, except I heard use a one-inch razor blade, which I, I've never seen a one-inch. I, I, I think they meant one and nine-sixteenths is what they meant, but uh, they, they want us to use a smaller razor blade versus a, a, a larger one, whether it be a razor scraper or a broad knife. It doesn't make a lot of sense. I can go six strokes with this, or five, or one with this. You're still removing the fabricating debris which is causing the scratches. No matter how you remove it, it's still causing the scratches. It's not the scraper causing it. Uh, the, the, there's a lot of uh, publications out there that are saying that the scrapers are causing the problem. The scratches weren't there before you did the windows. He's right, they weren't there before you did the windows. But the fabricating debris was, and the fabricating debris is what caused the scratching. 
you use the same scraper on other windows and they didn't scratch that weren't tempered. So it wasn't your method or your scraper, it's something on the glass. And like I said, that will, will go into more detail uh, on, the, on the tempered glass defect seminar. But I want to make it clear that the, uh, the liability has to be with the fabricator. So get the waiver signed and it puts you in a position to where you can help your builder. You can be an ally to your builder rather than a fall guy. If you get the waiver signed, you're no longer a fall guy. If you give him a waiver so he can get his waiver signed from the builder to the supplier, then he doesn't have to worry about it. But it, but it gives the supplier a heads up, we know what's causing this now. And it lets everyone know, only send quality glass to this job because if it scratches, we're sending it back. And they signed off on it saying that they're going to be responsible. So I, I do not recommend uh, going to a one inch. Some of my builders say, Dan, we don't want you to use scrapers. And I say, fine, we won't use scrapers at all. It means you have to cover your glass 100%. And I admit builders should cover their glass 100%. In reality, it doesn't happen. But I do agree they should cover it 100%. Then my guys can go out there and just do a wash job, and all I can say to that is ching, 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 ching. I'll fly through them houses then, and I can give them a cheaper bid to do them, but it never happens. So if there's construction debris on there, we use scrapers. That's the only option I have is to use scrapers. And I've had people in the industry tell me, well, why can't you just take off one piece at a time like this? That wouldn't scratch it, would it? Well, they're right. That wouldn't scratch it, probably. If it did, it'd just be little dinky ones. But as I've told them, you can probably paint the Empire State Building with a toothbrush, too, if you had to. So who's willing to pay that, though? I have found out that none of them have. So I've decided to say, we use scrapers. We're going to continue to use scrapers. And if they want to hire a window cleaner that wants to come up with another way, using solvents and other chemicals that are going to cause other problems, health-wise, and to their window frames and to their walls, then have at it. But with my company, we have chosen to use scrapers, and uh, that's the method of choice for us. I have one more quick question regarding, um, I don't know if you can expand into this, but pricing um, as far as compared to um, janitorial companies. Uh, the battle that we've had is that they've had house cleaners that have done the whole house for so many cents a square foot. Um, you give them a price for construction window cleaning, let them, letting them know the waivers and everything else, and sometimes there's a little um, price sticker shock there. Um, can you expand into, into pricing or, or, or how to combat that problem? As far as pricing, uh, whether your client is the builder or it's another cleaning company you're doing work for, uh, I, I don't see how you can help uh, whether they have sticker shock or not. The bottom line is the reality of construction window cleaning is it does pay a lot more, a lot more. And the reason it pays a lot more is, is two reasons. One is it does take longer to do, not a lot longer, my guys do 125 to 150 windows a day. I'm talking to a journeyman window cleaner. So they can cook through them pretty quick. But the biggest thing is the liability. The liability is huge in construction window cleaning with the scratches. And if you're not trained on construction window cleaning, you're not trained on the scratches, you're not trained on the fabricating debris problem that's out there, most window cleaners that have gotten into window cleaning, just window cleaning, are self-taught. And once they've been in business a couple years, they're thinking, hey, I'm pretty good at this. I think I'm going to go into construction now. So they're going to, since they self-taught themselves in window cleaning, now they think they're going to self-teach themselves in, in construction window cleaning, which is a whole different area. You can talk to anybody in all the different window cleanings and ask them which is the toughest. And by far, construction window cleaning is the toughest. It's the hardest. It's the hardest to learn. It's the most time consuming. And it also has the biggest liability, and that's why it pays about three times as much. All I can say to anyone who wants to use your services, you need to, commit, you need to compute your bid on how long it takes you. If you can do one house a day, and you need $200 a day, and you do one a day, then it's $200. You've got to bid it by how fast you can do it and what you need to expect to make in a day, not by what they're willing to pay. My builders, we do the same thing. We have a certain amount that we charge. We just charge by the square foot, but we do the whole house. We don't just do construction window cleaning. My company does the entire, the carpets, the, the bathrooms, the cabinets, 
we do everything in the house. When we get done, the homeowner's ready to move in. We don't have to do anything. They don't, they don't have to do anything at all to uh, move into the house. We have another division that does scratch removal, special services. Uh, we have a division that takes care of anything in the house that can go wrong, we can fix it. We do scratch removal, we do window frame repairs, we do stainless steel, we do plastic, we do uh, tub repair, shower repair, uh, just about anything that gets messed up in the house, we can go in and fix it. So the builder can cross that off his punch list and go from there. But that's, that's something else beyond, beyond the construction window cleaning. Yeah, Dan, also to, <clears throat> in regards to properly bagging the windows, I've had some hearsay talk around town, different guys, about them possibly putting some kind of thicker mill plastic, like a uh, cover that comes on a nicer watch or an appliance that you peel off to keep it from getting scratched. Have you heard anything about that, or do you think that's something that the, uh, the, the glass manufacturers should lean towards? to prevent any. Right. I've, uh, I've actually dealt in that myself for many years. Uh, 25 years ago, I was in the, the glass protection business myself. Uh, we used a Cosmoline product that we actually, it was like an oil we shot on the glass. And uh, we actually used that for about 10 years until problems did arise uh, with other people getting into the business. But yeah, there is a couple of uh, window manufacturers now that are promoting that. Uh, I haven't had a chance to test any of it, uh, but what you're talking about is the static cling. Uh, most of the, the plastics they're using for, for the glass itself, it's either a visqueen type that's, that's just bagged the window and it's loose on the glass, which then work pretty good until the sheet rocker or someone cuts the lead air in. And the other type they're using a lot nowadays is, is they'll use a film that actually sticks onto the glass and then they tape the edges. That one works pretty good if if uh, you're buying the proper film, I know there's some of it out there that uh, once it gets baked on for three or six months, uh, you have a hard time getting it off, especially in hot areas like Sacramento, Arizona, Las Vegas. Uh, then you try to pull the film off, and it either doesn't want to come off or it's very hard to get off and it leaves the glue on the glass. Then the window cleaners really have a problem then, uh, trying to come back to take the glue off. And it doesn't happen much around here, but I do run into it now and then. And I just tell the builder that's extra. He says, "Well, you know, that's isn't that your job?" Well, no, that's that 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 there's really not my glue here. That glue belongs to the plaster. He's the one to put this on here. It's like when plastering contractors tape the edges, and, and they buy the cheapest tape they can buy. They end up buying it for ten dollars a truckload. And then when they pull the tape off, the glue stays on the frame. Well, when my guys come there to do the frames, they tell the superintendent, but that's an extra to, to take off that glue. That, that glue doesn't re isn't really part of what we do. So either the plaster can come back or we do charge them extra to, to take care of that. But I know there, there's a lot of people out there trying to come up with different things. I, I've worked on it a lot myself. I have some different things I'm testing now. On the side of my warehouse, uh, before you guys leave, I'll show you some things I have going, uh, spray-on products. But most products that actually come into contact with the glass itself, the big problem with it is when it's time to pull it off. When it's time to pull it off, does it come off 100% or does it leave something behind? And then the static film you was talking about, like it's on a watch, the problem with them is they work great, but when it rains or high winds, it blows it off. See? So you have to hit that happy medium. You want it to hang on, but you don't want it to hang on too much because you want to let go at, at, at a certain time. And a lot of these products say, yeah, you can put them on, leave them there for 10 years, and they peel right off. Well, yeah, right. It just doesn't work that way. That's why I do see a lot of these products, and, and I do a lot of testing on these products to make sure they work. Then if I find something that works, I let my builder know, hey, this stuff works pretty good. You might want to have your plaster start using this. And if you can help your builders out that way, then they kind of move you up on the, on a totem pole for bids and other things because they know you're concerned about them too. Kim. <coughs> when, you <say> you <coughs> excuse me. when you say you sharpen your broad knife, you're actually flattening the edges. Isn't that a contradiction of terms? You don't actually sharpen the broad knife? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I actually, I, you're right. I do say I sharpen it. What it does, it does flatten it, correct. But what it does is it, is it leaves two sharp edges, square edges, I should say, on each side. So, so as someone using the razor scraper, when you're using a razor scraper on the glass, you have one sharp edge. When I use a uh, putty knife or broad knife on the glass, I have two sharp edges. 
I have this sharp edge and I have this sharp edge. It's a square edge, you know, like this versus yours. But the square edge, you'll find out I have two of them, which helps me out. And on plaster, a square edge works much better. I've noticed a lot of the razor scraper manufacturers now are starting to come around to this idea and they're starting to have blades that, that, that you put in these things that sharp on one side and dull on the other. They're thinking of this. Someone in the company heard about the broad knife and how well it works on, on plaster especially, and it just pops it right off. But yes, as a matter of fact, it, it's, not, it's not sharp, it, it's dull. But that's, that's one of the reasons I like it. <laughs> You know, like I say, talk to anyone who uses razor scrapers, and I'm not saying don't use them. Everyone has to decide what they want to use. And we do, we do use little, little razor blades to take off stickers and stuff. There's no getting around that. The broad knife is no good for that. It's no good for that. Okay. Is that it? Any more questions? Okay, we're going to take a, a short break uh, uh, so we can move things around a little bit here. And when we come back, we'll... Uh, do some outside windows here. Thanks a lot. Okay, uh, we're going to do some outside windows here. That'll be our next uh, part of our seminar. First of all, I'd like to go over uh, what we're going to use on all that stuff that was on that table. Uh, my company has chosen to use uh, we usually use a five gallon bucket. I fill the five gallon bucket uh, about four gallons worth. It's very important to make sure when you, when you use your buckets that you put plenty of water in the bucket. If you put a little bit of water in the bucket it gets dirty much quicker. So you don't have to fill it to the top but you should have at least four gallons on that bucket. Okay. The other thing we decided to use was uh, the window brush versus a strip washer. We use sponges versus uh, surgical towels. We'll show you how we use them. I usually like to have a minimum of four, a maximum of uh, six. Sometimes I get a little curry away and I go eight, but uh, when I reach for a sponge, I like one to be there. The other two items will be the green pad, which I use to clean the frames with, and uh, the little putty knife that we use to get down on the tracks with the green pad. I'm going to throw it in the water so I get water going down my pants. <laughs> the other thing we use on the outside is uh, this product that has a little bit of phosphoric acid in it. That helps uh, eat the cement off the plaster and it helps uh, release the uh, stucco a little better. Uh, the soap that we use is just uh, any window cleaning soap will uh, work. The, the key to the soap though, in my opinion, when you put the soap in the water, always fill the bucket of water first before you put the soap in. If you put the soap in first, it'll suds up and you'll have a six inch head of suds and you'll have to fight the suds. The other thing that's very important is how much soap you use. We use very little soap. So the amount we use, that's it. That's it. Any more than that, you're going to be fighting your soap. You'll have a lot of suds, a lot of squeegee marks. You'll find out you'll get what they call a lot of bleed back, where the soap gets behind your frame. You'll squeegee it down, it'll be nice and clean, and then all of a sudden the soap will start bleeding back onto the window again. Uh, I think that's one reason why a lot of guys use surgical towels, because they're using too much soap in their water. Just a little bit of soap is all you need. Just try it. Okay? Okay, starting out, I like to, when I'm getting ready to do a window here, I like to have my bucket on the right to where it's out of the way. It's not in the way of me doing the window. And I also like to have it to where my handle on my bucket is facing me. And my window brush, I set on the edge right here. And I'll show you later why I set it there. Okay. I start out, but before I do that, I want to show you the difference on window brushes, the advantages of a window brush versus a strip washer. A lot of guys don't like using a window brush because they say what happens is it drips all over the place, and they're right. 
But if you hold it right, it won't. It won't drip a drop. So when you use a window brush, I usually shake it off. Just shake this end off. Then you have plenty of time to get from here to the window without dripping. And right now, this is outside, so you don't worry as much about the dirt. But it makes it kind of nice where it's not dripping all over. And if you hold it here for long, you just need to turn it around. And it won't drip on you. But that's the key to using a window brush. Okay? Okay. Start doing the window. I usually put some phosphoric acid across the top. Maybe two shots like that. Same thing on this window. And that's all you need. Very little. And the phosphoric acid will eat up the cement. You can see pieces already coming down the window. Because they can't hang on to the glass without the cement holding it together. That's what holds it on the glass. Then I rinse my brush out good, get most of that acid out, and wet it one more time. Everyone has their own method on how they scrape a window. Uh, the, the key to it is you want to just make sure you scrape every square inch. The way I do it is I start across the top, come down one side. So it leaves an area here that's clean. Then I start here and come across like this. You notice where my window brush is catching all the stuff, or catching most of it. Then when I get down at the bottom, I re-wet the window. This side, same thing. Across the top, down one side, and I start making rows. My rows are about 18 inches, and I work my way across the window. Make sure when you do your scrape and you come down, you don't do this. That's what scratches the glass. And I show my guys that's what scratches the glass, so it will scratch the glass. And they'll see it actually does scratching. We'll have another seminar. We'll, we'll show you how to get them scratches out. Also, when you get to your last bunch of strokes down here, make sure when you go down, you stop a little bit short. Don't jam the stuff down into your frame, because then, then the construction debris gets down in your frame here. So when you do it, just stop short. And then you go across the bottom like this. And here, across the bottom like this. Once both windows are scraped and re-wet, you grab your green pad and your putty knife with the water in it. And, and I clean all my window frames. When you clean your window frames, just keep in mind, start in one place and go all the way around the whole window. And after a while, you'll get to where you start at the same place all the time. I start up here, making sure you don't get the green pad on the glass. The window tracks, when I clean these out, I suggest you always start in the end and work towards the center. Start at this end and work towards the center. Don't start at the center and shove all your garbage to the end because then it's hard to get out of here. Then you do the upper track the same way. Then this window here, make sure you don't get the glass. When you do construction window cleaning, try to remember you always have something in each hand. When I'm doing the scraping, I have the window brush in one hand and the scraper in the other. When I, when I clean the frames, I have the little knife in one hand and my green pad in the other. Always have something in each hand. If you don't have something in each hand, you're letting valuable time get away from you. This way here, if I'm, if I'm going over this frame and there's something that doesn't want to come off, I'm, I'm right there. I just keep going. 
I don't have to stop, come over and, and get my other equipment. So try and keep that in mind. I'm going to rewrite the window down one more time. Then since I use sponges, I usually like to have all my sponges squeezed out and ready to go. So I kind of use my brush here as a table to stock all my sponges on it. So once I start squeegeeing, I don't have to stop. And I'll start out by doing the frames first. I'll wipe down all the frames. I usually like to try to hit the, wind, the glass a little bit too. And the sponges get dirty, throw it in the bucket, keep on going. You're not looking to get it perfect first time around. You touch it up when you're done with the squeegee in. Now when it's time to squeegee, the pull method, which is the method we use, I usually try to wipe the window around the edge, and I try to get the corner of the sponge in this area here. And what that does is it pulls the water out from the frame, and it won't bleed back on you later. So if you start here with three fingers pushing on it, that's much better than guys doing this, you know, with one finger. It, it doesn't have the ability to, to pull the water out of the frame. So I get along the top, I hesitate in the corner, come down one side, and I'm ready to start squeegeeing. I actually have this in the handouts that, that we handed out to everybody, the system I use on squeegeeing. Uh, and it's also on the website if you want to check that out. I call this the top cut. This is the first down. And this one here, I haven't wiped this side yet, so I need to wipe it before I start squeegeeing. And this is double take. Same thing on the other side. Across the top, down the right side. You notice when I'm taking my cuts, when I come down this side, I start here. I don't start up against the frame because it'll bring water out of your frame. Start always away from the frame, and when I start down, I get the squeegee turned around so it's pulling the water away from my frame. If you do it this way, the water goes this way, or do it this way, the water goes back to your frame, and I'm trying to get it away from the frame. So as I come down, the water is going in this direction. The center one, same thing. Don't start at the top. Start a couple inches down and angle it the same way. I want my water to be going in that direction. The third one, it's just the opposite. You don't want your water going into the frame, so you start here and you go the other way. And by the time you get to the bottom, the water is working its way out here, but it never makes it to the end because you hit to the bottom before it comes to the end. When you get that done, touch up your frames. Do not touch the glass. There we go. Now what I usually do when you have when you get done with a window, you can't just walk away and leave this stuff laying around because it makes it look bad. What I usually do is, is wet my window brush real good, shake out all the stuff that was in it, and I'll wet it down. And when it dries, you won't even see it. But don't walk away leaving all that garbage on the wall. Okay?
Also, the other reason I like to put my window brush here because if I put it here, when I pick up my bucket to go, I end up losing my window brush half the time. So try to have it just opposite your handle. That way it always goes with you. Okay? Any windows we have to go to the ground, make sure you guys have knee pads. Do this in the same way. Usually I don't try to wet my window brush too much the first time out because it dilutes the phosphoric acid too much. This, this one is a little taller so it takes a little longer for it to, for it to run down so I'm no, no big hurry to smear it around. Once it's sat on there for a minute, you're ready to have at it. Across the top, down the side, and start making your patterns. Like I said before, don't do this. You'll scratch the glass. Try and keep the same stroke going, that way it's easier to keep track of where you're going and where you've been. Usually when I scrape a window, I take it in rows so you can keep track. I know exactly my path, I take about a five inch path so I get the biggest bang for my buck. Some guys will do this. If you're going to do that you might as well use a one inch razor blade. <laughs> now the, the, uh, when I come across like this I try to take a five inch pass I also take the same amount of distance here. A lot of guys will do this. You know, and they're, they're all over the place. I don't know how they can figure out what they've done and what they haven't done, and they have to pay attention to what, I, what haven't I scraped yet. If you actually do it the way I'm doing it, you scrape every square inch of the glass. So I'm not looking for any plaster or paint. I'm looking to get every bit of water off this window. Now as far as when you start doing a lot of this, when you scrape, when I teach my guys to start out scraping, and I, I suggest everyone who watches this video, when you scrape, pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. Like that, when you start. That's the way I teach my guys. I want to see that scraper come off the glass. Then after you've been doing it a while, and you want to move it a little faster, because I won't pay you unless you move faster, they'll start doing this. You can, I can still hear he's hitting the glass, so he must be picking it up, which is the right thing. And then down the road, he wants even more money, so he'll do this. Which doesn't hurt the glass, but it's very annoying, and if the superintendent sees you doing that, he thinks you're hurting the glass. But you can actually hit the glass pretty hard, and it's not going to hurt anything. But there's no sense in that. After you've been doing it for a while, then what you can do is get scraping and then you don't have to pick it up. You go like this and go this way. I think somebody in the audience saw me doing it that way. That's because I've, 
I guess I've done it long enough to, that I can do that. Just be careful when you get down to where you can do that. Just make sure you're going back and not doing this. Because if you do it that way, scratch, scratch, scratch. I don't know if the mic's picking that up, but I'm scratching it every time I'm going backwards on that. I do a lot of glass consultations, and that's one of the things I look for. Who did the window cleaning? I go out and watch him. If he's a right-handed guy, he'll leave left-handed scratches. If he's a left-handed guy, he'll leave right-handed scratches. That's how I can tell he's drawing his knife backwards on the glass. So starting out, pick it up. You can see I got six inches. I'm going to go five, five, five. I want to see it picked up each time. And when you get a little better, I'm still picking it up, but not much. And after you've been on it for a while, what you're doing is you're just doing this. And you're moving it forward each time. Okay? And we'll have a question and answer session at the end of my next window. Again, make sure you keep this green pad off the off the glass. In fact, if you're just getting into window cleaning on construction, I think I would just start using the pad, the white pad right off. Don't even go to the green. You won't know any difference if you haven't used it. I usually use my little knife to shove the green pad down in that little track, get everything pulled out of there. Time to squeegee. The other thing I meant to bring up is, is when you, if you decide to use sponges, always make sure you fold your sponges and squeeze them out. Do not wring sponges. If you wring your sponges, you tear them, and they won't last you very long. So it's very important. Pull them out, fold them in half, and squeeze. Usually when squeegeeing a window, you want to squeegee the window that's closest to you first. And the reason for that is when you throw water around, you may throw water onto this window. So get this one first, and then squeegee this one, and any water you throw here, this one is pretty protected. Unless you're really out of control. Which I know window cleaners aren't out of control. Say along the top. 
down the side. Get that squeegee turned around. Two inches from the top, angle it. Make sure when you're coming down the window, you move fast enough so the water doesn't run back down. If you go slow, it'll run back down onto your other side. And be careful when you're doing your last touch up, you don't get your sponge on your window. When you're touching up your window frames, make sure if there's any paint or plaster you left behind, you pick it up. A little uh, putty knife works pretty good for that. Most patio doors will have a little strip of wood along the bottom. And I usually clean that up the same way I did this wall over here. Just wet your window brush with plenty of water and just run it across the bottom. Just like that. Okay. The more windows you do during the day with on outside windows where you're using the phosphoric acid, you'll find out that you, you can add less acid to the window because you're starting to get more in your water. So you aren't required to use quite as much. And, and as the day goes on, uh, you, you'll see that after you've done maybe two houses, if you're still using the same water, uh, you won't have to add any. But I highly recommend to change your water more often than that. I'd say. Every house you do an outside house of, of windows, I'd change the water. It doesn't take that long to change it. Across the top. Down one side. Like I say, down at the bottom, don't jam your stuff down in your frame. You can get the last little bit by just going across the bottom. A 
A lot of times I'll hold my window brush up like this too so, I, so when I pop the stuff off the glass it doesn't come, come back in my face or on me. Kind of helps out. At least until you get down lower on the window. I say start in one place on your window frames and work your way all the way around. And if you can, try to move your green pad in as long a strokes as you can, because it's much quicker. If, if you just do this, it takes a lot longer to do it. You can just move nice long strokes. When you, when you sponge down your window frames when you're cleaning your last time, you do the same thing with your sponge. Don't blot your sponge. Make one long stroke. It's much faster. On warm days, I might just do one window at a time because the water dries up so quick, especially if you're working on patio doors. Uh, you, you might want to just do one window at a time. Again, angle away. So the water goes away from the frame. Okay, a couple things I'd like to go over on the squeegee in before we go to the next set. When you're squeegeeing down a window, always keep an eye on where you're trying to direct your water. So if I'm starting here, I'm going to go this way and direct my water away from the frame. But as I do that, something you can't see, when I do that, my hand goes from here to here. And what happens is I push harder on this end of the squeegee, which will make it lock into this area here and even pull it more, 
water away from that frame. So as I come down, you'll see my index finger is on that side of the squeegee. That's because it's pushing harder on that side of the squeegee. And that's all I'm watching when I come down that window. The only thing I'm watching is the end of that squeegee so I can follow that frame down. When I do the center squeegee, I actually hold the squeegee in the middle. But also what I do is I start up here, but I'm really not touching on the glass until I get going. What I'm doing is I come down the window and I come down soft like this. I don't go like this and come down. When you put a squeegee on glass, you need to make sure you don't do that. No matter how easy you set it on, it's going to leave a mark. So when you come down the window, my index finger is actually touching the window first. And, and that's what lets me be able to ease it down. As I start moving down the window, I kind of land on it easy. Like that. That way I'm not just touching it. I'm coming down and I just kind of land like a landing. And this last stroke that I make, you'll see that my thumb now has switched over because I'm going to give it this, put more pressure on this end of the squeegee so that this end of the squeegee will ride inside this frame. And I'm actually pushing harder on that end. Also, if you decide to go all the way down like I did on these here, just make sure when you go all the way down, you stop and hesitate at the bottom. So you get here and you hesitate, give the water a chance to get off. If you go down and just hit it, it'll pop back up on you again. Another thing is if you have water down here, rather than squeegee the whole window again, start where your mutton bar is at. That way if you leave a squeegee mark, you're not going to see it. You know, that's like putting stuff under the rug at home. <laughs> and then before you leave, like I say, you can't leave this stuff behind. Not if you want to get the next job. Like you say, when it dries out. Right now I'm using a new wonder brush, so you are going to get some bristles coming out of the brush. That's all there is to it. One thing I'd like to cover before we go into the question and answers is if, if we do use a wonder brush or even any equipment you use, it's very important to take care of your equipment. And, and when you get done using your equipment, you need to make sure that, that you get a fresh bucket of water so you can empty out all your stuff because there is a small amount of soaps and acids in all your equipment. Squeeze it out, put it in fresh water, and I do that with everything, my soap bottles, everything. Rinse it out here first, then I try to shake out as much water as I can. Of course, this is outside, this isn't in the house on the rug. <laughs> Then empty this water out in the dirt somewhere, and then this water is what you're cleaning everything out with. What I usually do is set my sponges on top of my brush. That way I'm not setting them in the dirt. Everything's nice and clean. You don't have acid working on all your stuff. Take the bucket, empty it out, and then when you come back, make sure you put everything away nice and neat. Okay? Nice and neat. Take off your holsters, set them in. Don't throw your window brush in where it's all crushed because the next morning it's going to come out all crushed. Another thing, like I said, these window brushes run about $50 a piece. This one is new, so we're having a little bit of uh, uh, bristles coming out. But if you don't rinse out your brush and get the soap and acid out of your brush, uh, you'll start losing bristles. And, and before long, you won't have any left. <laughs> All you'd be carrying around is just a piece of wood. So, so, so take care of your brush and your equipment. Wash them out in clear water when you get done. Okay? And that'll take care of the outside windows. <laughs>